I don't think I'm crazy. Um, so to that end, uh, yeah, here's the match rate. So white had a better match rate than black in terms of finding the best moves, but uh, there's still room for both sides to improve here. I mentioned that this opening was super sharp. Um, so apparently after this bishop drop, uh, Giko prefers uh, black's position, apparently. And uh, instead, uh, well, it suggests Giko that you push on the third file and try to checkmate the king. Um, so if I back up a move, um, yeah, I find it difficult to navigate this interface. So anyway, can I see, I'm trying to get the move in this move list to match up with the move in the analysis list, and I can never get this to match up. There's always this off by one error thing. Um, Pawn 3-6 is the recommended move. Okay, the actual game move here is 22 bishop drop 5-4. The recommended move was silver 6-3. Uh, so instead of committing your bishop early, yeah, this is what I thought. So again, uh, I'm not trying to nitpick on any particular streamer here or their style of play. I just think that something went completely unexplored in this analysis, so I wanted to take a look at it. Um, so in the game, Bishop was dropped on 5-4, and it was a challenging game. Hey, welcome. Um, and yeah, instead we could have moved the silver forward and left the bishop in hand. And uh, let's see. Yeah, that was the other thing that surprised me, is like, why didn't uh, Senta build a castle here? Why did Senta just go directly attack? I mean, yes, the, the king is right here, it's a target, but spending one move to help shore up the king before attacking makes some sense. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Now this is a cursory analysis by Giko. Uh, this move surprises me. It shouldn't, but it does. Well, I guess if you have a bishop, a knight, a lance, and a pawn still in hand, maybe this does make sense because yeah, if the silver takes, you can drop a knight to fork the two silvers and you can continue attacking down the third file. Um, so wait, this is the recommendation, is that silver 6-3, uh, apparently with an equal game, but yeah, I would have difficulty, okay, so yeah, there is the uh, silver takes on the edge file, and then both players are attacking, and this is complicated, okay, fair enough, um, but that's not the way the game went, the game went, um, well, there was a bishop drop, and then instead of attacking on the third file, again, I'm trying to get the move list here to match up with... Uh, yes, after this bishop drop, it happened on 5-4, Giko recommends pawn 3-5. Just go for it. There's no need to delay this attack. Um, I don't understand why, but... Yeah, somehow this bishop drop felt exposed. Uh, personally, I still would have played like king 6-8. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit of a coward there. But uh, what's the reason for any of... Oh my goodness. Uh, this is getting complicated. Okay, so how does this make sense? So the first thing to note is that this rook is blocked by the pawn and the silver. So it makes sense to push one of these two pawns. 
uh, in this case, because this one's hanging already, we might as well push it and try to use it to propel our attack forward. And this bishop might also become a target for the attack. Um, so we use this to blockade the bishop. Maybe that's the other concept at play here is that before the opponent has an opportunity to put something between the silver and the rook, um, we force this to happen, and the silver's trapped, and therefore has to blockade its own bishop. Um, and then we try to force some exchanges so that we can find a way toward continuing to attack the bishop. Here I'd be tempted to move the silver forward, and if this moves, then maybe the other silver moves past it and directly pursues the bishop or something, or... I'm not sure. At some point, this king will have to move and start protecting these pawns and or get out of the way of all these attacks. But, um... Yeah, I guess interposing this sequence somehow makes some sense. Uh, we hit the bishop. Okay. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, okay, yeah, I'm not sure I can calculate all of this, but apparently that's equal. Um, but that's really not the focus of this discussion. So here we have a green arrow indicating a good move, a red arrow indicating the move in the game, I believe. No, green arrow indicates the move in the game, red indicates better move. Um, anyway... Uh, the one moment I wanted to focus on is this huge dip in the graph. Um, so there were two large dips. One after um, bishop drop at 7-2. So yeah, instead of this bishop drop, just like any other move would have been good. Uh, this would have been good because eventually this second file is going to open and a complicated game will result. Um, so, yeah. Meanwhile, Gota is trying to break down the eighth file. So, that's complicated. I get it. I don't understand, but it's definitely complicated. Instead, we had bishop drop 7-2. And, oh... Oh. What? Wait, uh, something didn't match up here. Yeah, rook 7 1 was my thought. Rook 7 1. Okay, so this actually traps the bishop. Yay, welcome. Let's see. Oh yeah, sorry I don't have a command for Shogi Playground. Um, oh hey, welcome. Yeah, so I thought a few things were missed in the post-game analysis. One was that this bishop drop just gets the bishop trapped. Uh, if the rook had played 7-1 instead of 3-1. A lot of crazy stuff happens in Bioyomi, particularly at the end of a live stream, but um, just wanted to make sure that I was not completely insane. Uh, so, yeah, this actually traps the bishop, because then it has nowhere better to go than 8-3, where the gold successfully... Oh. Oh, me oh my. There's an even better move. Okay. Jeez. Uh, that's embarrassing. Yeah, that completely shuts down the attack on the right half of the board, scares the rook away toward its own king, and yeah, that's very good. Um, not only that, but the horse here is confined, and the only pieces he has in hand are a pawn, which cannot be placed anywhere, and a knight, which is just not useful anywhere. Um, so yeah, then you just take the silver, 
Use the silver to trap the horse. Easy. <laughs> you just have to find it, which is not the easy part. But once you get this far, uh, now it's smooth sailing. Um, yeah, that's nuts. I did not see this move. I just figured, hey, you dropped the gold here, and you've actually forced this bishop to be trapped. Um, but no, this is even better. That is a nice, nice find by the AI, or the engine. So if I scroll forward one move, um, yeah, this also surprised me. Okay, what? Are we looking at the same... Okay, so uh, I'm highlighting here Rook 3-1. Uh, which in this analysis pane highlights 41 bishop 8 3, which I thought also was a mistake. And it is. This is the other thing I was saying repeatedly, and people are like, well, you can't move the bishop. I'm like, yeah, you can. You just have to move this pawn out of the way. And then next turn, you can move the bishop. So, that was surprising too. Yeah. So, there's this. this huge double blunder um, that like swung the game uh, 2,000 plus points either way. Um, yeah, this is not the easiest thing to find in time pressure that, hey, I like, I want to move my bishop. My opponent has a gold. If I move the bishop right now, they'll just trap it. Uh, so therefore I need to give myself an escape route. And there's nothing that can shut off the escape route either. Or is there? Could this bishop actually effectively stop this? I didn't think so during the game. Um, if the bishop moves, just how bad is that? If the bishop moves and you exchange bishops and then you push on the third file, the silver is trapped. No, silver takes the pawn. You drop another no. Oh yeah, you drop another pawn and you race that up here. And it's spooky. But um maybe you survive that somehow? I don't know. That's interesting. Anyhow, engine recommends pawn takes pawn. Silver takes pawn drop, silver retreats. There's no hurry to retreat the bishop. Apparently because this bishop interposing on 5-4 doesn't make anything any safer. Um, honestly, this bishop would prefer to just be in hand. A bishop in hand is sometimes stronger than having a horse on the board. Alright, so then finally this rook says, enough, get out of here, and the horse obliges. So, okay, and then you... Yeah, that basically forces an exchange anyway. Alright, that makes sense. I'm waking up in 9 hours. It's 7 a.m. Yeah, and sometime between now and then I'm probably doing the Advent of Code challenge, too. Um, I am impressed that uh, at work, uh, or at least among co-workers, none of us have completed part one of the most recent Advent of Code day. Uh, silver takes, can't the rook take? Yeah, I guess. But yeah, here's the evaluation graph. And this is just the one moment in the analysis where it, uh, I was stunned to see, like, well, during the game, I was stunned to see the bishop drop here. Uh, I could show you it on the 81 Dojo site. So, yeah, I thought this was... I mean, I get that um, Panic was in time trouble. He was in Byoyomi here. Um, but yeah, this has to be retreated at some point. So, it was just a swing and a miss that this happened... And then this promoted here. This did not have to happen either. Um, if the idea 
is that this promotion will force my opponent to put down another metal piece. Yes, it will. Um, which they obliged, and now you have an exchange. And then I'm not sure like this helped anything either. But um, yeah, there was not a need to go into that. So I guess um, perhaps Lily just got very excited, both on account of the time situation that Panic was in, and just like having the king and the rook right next to each other. Like the king has completely locked itself in. It feels like you've got a dominant position. And you do, but you still have to win the game. So, uh, yeah, Shogi's hard like that. It's not like chess, where you get a dominant position and you just say, oh, it's over. Let's play the next game. Shogi is uh, much more complex. It's beautiful for that. Um, but yeah, so then we got this exchange. Uh, I had difficulty reading a lot of this. This is an interesting way to play it, too. What else was I thinking about here? I was thinking, like, could we drop the bishop and then attempt to trap the gold? Uh, like, this gold does not have very many squares to go to. But I was nervous that if you drop the bishop first, that somehow a knight drop would ruin things. Anyway, it's water under the bridge at this point. Um, yeah, side note. Yes, a rook is scary to give away here, but... Uh, this, this could have been defended a bit better. Um... Let's see. Undefended 2-7 is hard to leave. Yeah. You're reading bishop drop 2-7, so I should go back a bit. Undefended 2-7 is hard to leave. So, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I was considering stuff like this. Because it hits an obvious target over here. Um, while also threatening to hit this. Oops. So you know that that's coming. You got this. Yeah, I was confused. Um, there must be something I've missed here. I just... Well, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. So if we do this bishop drop... Potentially we're going to see, well, this is not so bad either. Yeah. Um, potentially we might see something like this. And then the silver is off sides. And this knight is well positioned. So yeah, maybe this isn't worth it. What happened in the game is probably fine. It's just, this is hard to read. Um, that was resourceful. But yeah, here, uh, this too surprised me. Yes, uh, giving away a rook would be painful here. Um, but what actually transpired was also painful. Um, Like, giving away the pawns right in front of the king, that tends to hurt. I'm not sure what you do at this point. Well, I did run the game through Shogi Gui. It's probably got some recommendation. What does Shogi Gui recommend in this position? Is this just a one-sided affair here? White one position. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay, so yeah, the last decisive moment was actually, um, I'm going back and forth through the analysis graph. White advantage goes to white one position, uh, owing to gold drop on 7-2. Oh, 
Okay, yeah. Sorry. I forgot. So yeah, while this... I did find this surprising. For more than one reason. Um... So I found this surprising because... Um... One, you don't normally see a gold just off on its lonesome here doing an attack. Uh, two, this gold could actually be effective against this castle because, I mean, you count one, two, so like it's two moves away from checking the king, but it's unsupported. It would need support from friendly pieces. And the only way they can attack this gold is by way of the 6-2 square. And 6-2 square, uh, if you look at knight's throw away, um, both of these squares are not accessible to a knight. One, because the knight would be attacked on the one square, and the other has a pawn on that square. So actually this isn't a distance of two or three, it's a greater distance from the king than it looks like. Um, but eventually this could become a shorter distance. So that, uh, so those are a couple reasons that surprised me. But the third reason this surprised me is, you know, we've been building up this attack for a very long time. Oops. Um, like, We've been wanting to push one of these pawns and just have at it, right? So when's that going to happen? So Yeah, that's the other thing. Especially with the opponent like threatening to put down a bishop and ask us where our rook belongs. Uh, it helps to give our square, our rook some squares to run to, like it could run up and over, and I don't know how far it's going to get, but uh, at least giving yourself some options never hurts, as long as you don't just drop the rook to king rook fork. But I don't see any way that king rook fork could occur in this particular position, so yeah. So these were reasons... Well, the other reason I found this surprising, not just because the gold was off on its lonesome here, or that the king was, um, I don't know, that this gold could actually be an effective attacking piece if there were other pieces attacking too. Um, but also this silver here on 8-2 is not that valuable. I mean, yeah, I like having silver generals, but... The more shogi I watch, the more I realize this is kind of like the U.S. children's game of Bug House. Where they'll do anything and everything to continue attacking the king. And uh, shogi endgames need to be more like that. So, um, often it can be about how many pieces do you have instead of what their value is. Um, so yeah, chasing down this silver in the corner of the board, and then leaving your gold a distance of at least four moves away from the king, does not really sound like the most enterprising deal, especially if you have to drop the gold and spend another turn moving it to take the silver. You've given up two tempi, and the opponent can find something to do with two tempi if you just pass they'll find something some way to attack so yeah that was um so a lot of crazy things happened in the span of just a few moves here and none of this got mentioned in the post-mortem and so that's why i downloaded the kifu ran it through shogi gui just to verify like um is there some higher plane of existence that, like, these ideas about trapping a bishop, or freeing the bishop, or just pursuing a consistent plan throughout the game? Um, is there some higher plane of reasoning for static rook openings that I just am not aware of? Or perhaps um, are some of my criticisms valid? I think here... A uh, couple ideas I had must have been interesting. 
Oh. Oh, there's another idea here, too. So the other reason you want to pursue this attack, instead of pushing this pawn... Let's see you do this. Pick a move for Gota. Anybody have an idea? There's a move for Gota here. So... Yeah, I see. Not sure how long I should give you guys to think about this, but also it says I got one viewer, so... I might be wrapping up soon. Uh, Advent of Code starts in 45 minutes. Wouldn't want to be late for that. Yep. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, you did point this out earlier, and it still applies here. And now I understand what Bolt 27 means. My sense of coordinates were all messed up, but yeah, that's the move. So this is yet another reason um, to play uh, the pawn in front of the rook. So I think both players have just completely lost their bearings. Yeah. Um, that's pretty funny. So, yeah, as a result of this game, um, Panic is 1Q, and Lily is 1Q. So, uh, I wish them the best of luck in their pursuit again of Wandan. I'm sure they'll both make it fairly quickly. I see Lily had already started a game. Yeah, it was a very exciting game to watch. Um, and I guess this is the sort of thing which happens when you just like play openings and experiment each game. You're going to learn, and sometimes you will get burned. And I think the key here... Um, well, there's a saying in chess that loose pieces drop off. I'm pretty sure there's a shogi proverb about that too. But, yeah, so this gold moving away from these pieces ends up eventually being captured and could be dropped back on the square right between them, which is the most poetic justice ever. Um, that would have been a convincing repu uh, refutation. Well, um, yeah, let me take a look. Is Lily back up to Wandan yet? Or is she... Oh, never mind. She finished her game already. Or she's logged out. 